This episode was brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. I'm Marley Oxenholm from Pentester Academy TV, and welcome to our show, Access Point, where we spotlight cybersecurity companies and give an inside look at the people and technology behind the latest advancements in the industry. Today, I'll be speaking with the company SS8. I'm sitting down right now with Tony Thompson, who is going to show us a demo of the SS8 Breach Detect solution. Take it away. Thank you very much. Absolutely. So, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be demonstrating SS8 Breach Detect. And SS8 Breach Detect is a network traffic analysis and advanced threat detection solution. And so um, th there are two primary use cases for this technology. The first use case is the ability to proactively detect advanced threats and devices of interest in the environment. That's use case one. Use case two is allow me to manually investigate and threat hunt in my environment by querying the network and a recorded history of that network. And so just uh, in, in terms of the core components of SS8 Breach Detect, in this environment, we have a sensor, a soft sensor, sitting passively on the network. It's recording network traffic. We have an analytics engine that's running in the cloud, and it's doing recursive analytics, meaning it's rewinding the network over time and piecing together behaviors on the network. And then we have our discovery interface right here, which is essentially the user interface that I'm going to walk through now. And so what we're looking at here is um, is a dashboard screen, pretty straightforward dashboard. Uh, in this case, it's meant to show you that our sensor technology at the bottom is up and active. It's monitoring the network. In the top left, you can see this screen that says the total number of HDRs that have been captured in this environment. And 2.3 million alone have been, cap uh, have been captured in this particular environment. Um, and an HDR for the audience is uh, a high definition record. And again, these are very detailed application level metadata data summaries that we're generating from the network. Then we can see a snapshot of the attacks analyzed, the attack vectors analyzed, and then we just get a bit of a snapshot on assets at risk in the environment. And this is where I'm going to pivot to the threat board. I'm going to move up to the top here. I'm going to click on this threats tab. And what we've done is something interesting here. We've actually taken a page out of the engineering workflow, and we've adopted this Kanban-style drag-and-drop workflow where every tile on this board represents a device of interest that we're scoring on the network. Work. And so in this case, I can see I've got a high risk device here. It's got an IP address. Um, it's a server in this case. I can see a couple of behaviors here that have uh, triggered it to become a high alert. And then I can see an, uh, an underlying behavior here, which represents the most recent behavior identified on this device. So as a security analyst, what I can do is I can actually click into this tile. And what I'm going to get is a timeline view of the cyber kill chain down at the bottom for this particular device of interest. And I can actually, I'll zoom in here to the timeline so we get a better idea and we can see these particular behaviors a bit better. But each dot on this timeline represents a behavior that we're scoring on the network. And so I can actually navigate through these dots and these behaviors. And in this case, I can see this particular server is getting brute force attacked. What we do at the top is we actually summarize the information at the top so that if you're not a cybersecurity expert, you really don't understand a lot about cybersecurity, we're going to give you some explanation in general terms about what's happening with that behavior. And so then we're giving you some details about the device, the application, the source of the attack. And we can even see embedded here, we've got reputation data sourced into the system. So if the device is communicating or it's being attacked from a particular destination, we've got some reputation information that says, well, is it really a high risk? Is it really uh, something that has been sourced as having a really bad reputation? It gives you just a bit more context and color around that. And then what you can do is, again, I can navigate further ahead in the timeline to see more of this brute force attack taking place. If I want to drill in deeper to this particular behavior, I can simply click into this detail card. And what it's going to pull up is another window that's going to show me a bit more detail about the particular behavior. So in this case, I can see geolocation information in the top left. Um, and if I go up here into this session grid, I can hover over. And this yellow hover over card represents 
that high definition data that we're extracting from the network on the packet, on the session, specifically tied to this behavior. An analyst doesn't need to peel the onion back this far, but this is just a way to get more forensic detail about a particular behavior if you have questions. So let's go ahead and pull back here. Um, and again, I can skip ahead in the timeline. We go to command and control. I can actually see shell shock was dropped on this machine. Again, you can see the description changes here at the top. Um, uh, again, I can click into this detail card. The detail information will change once again. Uh, and if I hover over at the top here, you know, one of the things I'll point out is you'll see a response code of 200 here, which essentially means that the server accepted the brute force attack. It, it, it gave an acceptable response. And then you can see in the sender user agent, that's actually the Shellshock script being dropped on this particular machine. And then the traffic is obviously incoming because it's an attack. So I'll go ahead and pull back out here. Just wanted to show this particular workflow. I'm going to close this card in particular. I'm going to grab one more card here, this low risk device. I'm going to go ahead and click into this. Um, this device we can see looks like to be a, a user machine. Um, and, and a thing that I want to point out is over on the left, we've incorporated device fingerprinting into the technology. And the reason we did this is we had incident responders and customers come to us and say, I want to understand some DNA about that device without having to go the, to the device itself and without ever having to install software on the device. And so what we can tell you is we can tell you the Mac ID, the user ID, what operating system was running, was it running a Chrome session, were there other agents installed on the endpoint itself? And that may be of interest to say, did I have antivirus running on it? Did I have some sort of other security software agent or technology running on that endpoint? It's meant to give you some DNA about the device without having to go to physically to the device itself. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pull back out of this. Um, again, when you're done with this in your workflow, you can drag the tile into your closed workflow, and then you have the option of do you want to reset the state of the device or the score only, and this completely depends on what action you provided on that particular device or endpoint. You could have uh, re-imaged the machine. You could have just changed a configuration. Um, you know, If you just changed a configuration, you may want to just reset the score, and then you want to keep all of that history, uh, and, and if you want to maybe you re image the machine, you would reset the state and reset all of the history. So you're sort of starting from starting from ground zero. Okay, so that is the proactive threat detection workflow. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump to our query and investigation workflow. And this is that manual workflow that allows you to really, it's a powerful tool for folks that maybe are familiar with a Wireshark technology or something that's been used to really look at the network. This is a very powerful capability that allows you to crawl back through a recorded history of the network and run customized dashboards and views for that information. So we have a very robust query engine that we've built here, and it supports full Boolean logic. So um, just to give an example, I'll click on this uh, vulnerability scanner query here. I'll click on edit, and you can see up in the query box, I've already got a query search string built in here, but uh, you know, expanding this query or editing the query is very easy. You can click in the box. You can um, put in and or parameters. I can drop again. I can add application type. I can say application equals you know, Dropbox, you know, pick your application and completely customize this based on any time period. And so what we like to, what we refer to as the output of these queries are what we call investigations. So I'm going to go ahead and navigate to the investigations tab at the top. And, and I've got some pre-canned investigations in here. And think of investigations as essentially customizable dashboards that allow you to visualize the query data. And so I'm going to go ahead and click into this peer-to-peer -peer visibility dashboard here. And it's going to bring up a new window. And I've got a number of widgets that are actually in this particular investigation. And what I can see here is I'm visualizing peer-to-peer -peer information on the network. And what I can see is I can see the users communicating over peer-to-peer. -peer. I can see the server information. I can see the applications being used. I can see a geolocation of where communications are going. Um, and then we've got a session grid down at the bottom. And one thing that's extremely powerful in these boards is the ability to 
pivot. And so what you can do is, let's, like, let's say I just want to look at Alexis's communications over peer-to-peer. I can click on Alexis, click the plus sign, and the whole board will pivot to only show me Alexis's communications over peer-to-peer. So it's a very powerful way to gain network visibility and really understand what's happening on the network in more of a scheduled and uh, more of a manual workflow that says, I want to rerun these queries maybe daily or weekly or at some frequency that I want to go back and visualize the data. So I'll I'll just show one more example here. There's a lot of companies that will host their own mail still. Um, They host their own exchange server. Um, They want detailed visibility from an insider threat perspective about how threats may be moving inside or laterally within the environment. Like let's say maybe you're worried about a disgruntled employee or you have an executive that may be a flight risk in the organization and you wanna see how mail traffic is moving in and out of the environment. This is a pretty detailed dashboard, and my screen's going to be a little cut off here because we're presenting. But uh, essentially, we're visualizing everything from the users communicating over mail. I can see the sender information, so sender email address. I'll go ahead and scroll to the right over here. I can see the receiver information, so where the email was going. And then I'm going to go ahead and scroll back here. I can actually see the mail subject line. Um, I can see the file types being sent. I can see the file names themselves being sent. And then again, all of this is pivotable. So if I want to take maybe one of these file names, I can click on the file name, click the plus sign, and the whole board will pivot to show me the interactions relative to that particular file. So it's a very powerful way to, in a different way, in a flexible way to visualize the data for an analyst or for a security organization. And that's really what I had uh, planned to present and demo uh, in terms of the technology. We other things that we have in the technology are very um, robust reporting, so we can create customized reports um, that can be sent at a scheduled frequency. We also have email alerting, so that when something hits this threat board and a tile appears on this threat board, an email alert can go out to the organization to any number of individuals with some summarized information that gives them a bit of detail, and they can click on a link to log into the system to understand more about what's going on. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sitting down and demoing all this. This was really interesting and eye-opening. I appreciate it. Yeah, it was fun. Thanks for having me. Awesome. You're welcome. And that's all the time that we have for today, so be sure to tune in next time for another episode of Access Point. Also, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook so you don't miss out on any of the latest cybersecurity news. This episode is brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.